Welcome to my channel. I'm Eris. I'm a board certified music therapist and thank you for clicking on this video today. I'm going to be bringing you in on the inside scoop of what it's like to work as a music therapist. I am in a western region of the United States so thankfully this area is really 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 into music therapy. They are very very much um, interested in how it works and seeing what can happen with it as it's continuing to grow as a field. And so thankfully, even though I am a student, as a board certified therapist, I still get to practice and hone my craft on the field as a working individual. Professionally, I am able to work at a variety of places and facilities, but today I'm going to be doing more of an inside scoop on what it's like to work at an adult day center. So I have the privilege of working at an incredible adult day center that services clients with different abilities. The population that I have the privilege of working with at this adult day center ranges between my age to about, I'm just gonna ballpark it, let's say like 85. So obviously that's a huge range. I'm 24, so from 24 to 85, you can imagine all of the music that can be played. I choose different music based off of the start of the session. Usually if it's more mellow, I'll choose a song with a BPM that is more reflective of a heart rate that is more so relaxed. And then if it's more upbeat and there's a lot going on, then I will match that. That is called the ISO principle. The ISO principle is very, very prominent in the field of music therapy. I'll be using the ISO principle to really be able to gauge where my clients are at that time and then be able to reflect that via the way that I practice today. So I will give more of an in-depth definition on what the ISO principle is. I will also go over tuning my guitar, some of my favorite ways to warm up, and just different musical um, elements of how I prepare. So now since we are in the prep time for the session, I just wanted to talk about what I've done so far to prepare for the session, even though I am nowhere near it. This morning I got up and I made sure to do my devotional. I like to do a devotional in the morning just to thank God for the day and just to set the intention to just try my best, do my best and allow the day to be what it is and whatever lemons that life gives me, I'm going to sweeten it up with the beauty of faith and gratitude. So I did my devotional, brushed my teeth, washed my face, all that good stuff, got ready and went to the gym. I love to go to the gym to sweat out any anxiety, any any fear, any frustrations that I might be taking into the session later if I don't sweat them out before the session. So I got a good little sweat session in. I love to work out on the Stairmaster. I love to use the abduction machine. I am leg heavy. I love to work out legs. That is like my favorite muscle group to work out. So that's what I worked out to give myself the endorphins and just the satisfaction of working out one of my favorite muscle groups and thinking while I do it. And then after that, I went to class, uh, or I showered and stuff, and I went to class. Um, I had two classes this morning, and I was prepared for them. They don't necessarily have anything to do with my preparation as a um, therapist for the session, but it does have to do with my preparation for the day. Being able to check off a couple things before my session, it makes me feel like I've already got a momentum going. It makes me feel that I've already checked things off, and this is just one extra thing that I'll be able to check off with no problems because I've already done so much today. So for me, that makes me feel good. I know for some people that can be overwhelming, but definitely would recommend having something not to distract you, but to give your mind, you know, a, t a chance to decompress and not think about what you have coming up. I went and got myself a vanilla iced coffee with oat milk and two shots of espresso. I don't drink a lot of coffee, but on days where I have big sessions, you to be able to create the environment that I want to share with everyone. So I like to have a little coffee just to bring up my spirits and it's sweet and I love something sweet. So that's what I have here. I've been sipping on this um, as I'm trying to prepare for the next part of the day. And what I also like about drinking the oat milk coffee is that oat milk is 
packed with protein. So it helps me feel full for the time that I'm up there doing all of the things I need to do for session. And it helps to just get my brain going and being ap active and on the money because of the espresso in there. So obviously not every day I drink coffee and not even every time that I have sessions I drink coffee. But today happens to be the day where I'm showing what it looks like when I'm really in my preparation mode and I'm checking off all my little preparation tools and boxes. So I have my iced coffee here. And the next step is just to pack up my guitar and head out the door. So I'm gonna show you what my guitar case looks like really quickly. I'm gonna show you what I have in my therapy bag just to make sure I'm prepared for the session, things I never leave without. And then we're gonna head on out and go to the session. Okay, so like I said, I have my guitar bag all packed up. This is my guitar case. There are lots of compartments on here. Shout out to my parents. I got this guitar, I think two years ago at this point now. It is a classical three four size guitar and it is in a full size guitar case there's lots of padding and cushioning in it and there are these compartments here that i'm able to keep a lot of my therapeutic tools so in the front pocket here this is usually where i will keep my ipad um my ipad's not in here right now because it is over there charging up until i leave but i'll keep my ipad in here having an ipad is really nice it's such a privilege i'm using my sister's ipad she was so nice to let me use it because she's not necessarily using it for work right now but if you have an ipad you can use it as a great tool for reading chords reading lyrics and casting onto a screen that has apple share apple play things like that so i usually have my ipad in here to help me cast lyrics and use um, different chord sheets and then also I'll have some sort of instrument and right now I've been using these cute little bell batons is what I call them bell batons they're not actual batons they are little wooden sticks that have a ribbon on the end I'm just gonna back up so you can see the full length of it so they're just little sticks with ribbons on the end and as you can hear, there's a little bell at the end as well. And when everyone is, you know, helping me make music with these and creating different visuals with the types of ribbon work they're doing, it is a lot of fun. So that's something I've been taking to sessions. They're really easy to sanitize as well. All you need to do is spray down the actual ribbons with disinfectant spray, and then also wipe down the entirety of the stick and the ribbon with disinfectant wipes. And then they're all good to go. So I'll keep that in the front. And then finally, at the bottom, I keep a speaker. So this is a speaker that I actually had for my shower originally. So it is not waterproof, but water resistant. And I like to have a shower speaker for sessions specifically because they usually come with a suction cup on the bottom. And that's helpful so that when you're on the go and you're trying to stick your speaker down somewhere, it's not gonna get picked up by someone who might not necessarily have um, the executive functions to know not to pick up things or to touch things that are being used in session. This is just another level of security, the suction cup. So a shower speaker is great to take and it, it has great battery life because it's thinking it's in the shower. But in reality, it's on the go and staying dry. But even if it doesn't stay dry and someone spills near it, you're still protected. So if you're a therapist that works with different populations um, with different abilities or with children, this is a great resource for a speaker that is very durable. So I definitely recommend getting a shower speaker for your therapy bag. One of my essentials is my iPad um, stand. So this is a stand that is conducive to an iPad and a cell phone. So I can put my cell phone on here, I can put my iPad on here, and it just makes it much easier to be able to look out instead of looking down at my phone when I'm trying to read chords or read lyrics. So those are the things I'll keep in my therapy bag slash guitar case. In the largest compartment, of course, there is my guitar. So those are all the things. Oh yeah, and then there's a capo at the end of my guitar because key changes, honey, depending on the day, you might need to go all the way into a key change. So having a capo, a stand for your iPad or your phone, an instrument of choice, a lightweight instrument of choice for multiple people and a shower speaker are all things that I always keep in my bag as far as musical elements. And then finally, if you tuned into my last video, which hopefully I can link it in a card up here, you will also need that planner because your boss might come up to you and say, hey, oh my gosh, your session was awesome today. Do you have time on blah, 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 blah. And you might want to be like, yeah, or no. You'll only know if you got that planner. Get you a planner. 
Throw it in the bag. Let's go.